on. Right. So you don't need a car really when you're up in London, right? You can use a tube. You get one of them passes and you can just go everywhere. And once again, I used to run out of time because you've got to allow a day getting there, getting into your, re your residence. Then um, after that, what do you do next? <sighs> yeah, you've got to get some food. Um, now, when the family records was close by where I used to stay, I could use it in the evenings. But then they changed, they moved everything up to Richmond. Q. Whereas in the beginning, oh, you had the records on my fingertips. But of course, in those days, it was big, heavy books and microfishes, real tiring on the eyes, real heavy on the arms. But that was the donkey work we'd done in the beginning. And then, of course, once uh, computers, we got, all got computers, we all got www. God, that was such a great thing. And then you've got people transcribing like frantically everything. But what you've got to remember when you're looking up something, human error. Um, if they can, names can be spelt wrong. You know, human error. Because some of the inscriptions and the censuses in the parish records is very, very hard to read sometimes. So you've got to be aware of that. It's like at the moment, I can't find out where Mary Ann Oakbrooks and Louis are buried. I'm just wondering because it was between wars and they had a German sounding name where they, they even might have changed their name a bit because there was a lot of prejudice against anyone sounding German in those times because my mum told me and her mum told her. So they might have slightly changed their name because they wouldn't have wanted their graves desecrated. You've got to, this is what I mean about the bigger picture. You know, when you're doing tree, you've got to think of lots of things. That can influence where people are, why they're not showing. So folks, that's a mission. Why I'm on our sister at the moment is just in case she ended up not far from her sister. So, and it is weird that I can't find my great-grandmother, my great-grandfather, and my great-uncle. My great-uncle, because they had a German-sounding name. And all three of them, I found my, my granddad. I found him in Manor Park Cemetery. So basically, look at that view. I got pictures of this all year round, when it's spring and it's lush, when it's summer and it's hot. Now it's this winter. I do like to walk here in all seasons. Anyway, so I'm rambling on about tree a bit. People who aren't into tree, I think, God, that's boring. But people who are, take note of some tips. You're talking to someone who's been doing it between 20 and 30 years. Before internet, I started. Now, to my advantage, what always intrigued me was my, my mother's maiden name. Steib, Steeb, whatever that, how you want to pronounce it. I always thought, well, I wonder where that's from. What does it mean? Now, after doing several years research, there weren't many in the country. Quite a few had emigrated to America over, uh, over a 200 year period. In fact, my own great-grandfather's family all emigrated to New York in the 1870s and he stayed behind. He just got married and he decided to stay behind. I could easily have been a New Yorker, you know. So there's a whole batch of people that I follow now, they're in America. I've got people everywhere. And uh, South Africa, Australia, you know, everybody was moving about when it became more easy to become mobile. 
So anyway, I'm just saying about this name. And uh, I just wondered if the name had been altered a bit. I think, personally, I think they must have been buried where all the rest of the families were buried mainly, which was Manor Park Cemetery. Um, I have found some of my family, first cousins, graves. I found all my grandparents. All my, gran all my grandparents are buried there. Lots and lots of family of mine are buried there. But it could be that they were buried in Tower Hamlet Cemetery or Bun Hills or, oh God, there's so many others. Do you know what I mean? Surely you've got to look for going up. There's that, there, don't you go up this way. We're not doing the other end today. So I nearly got lost, nearly got carried away going up there. Um, do you want to carry on? I'm not sure. Carry on. I'm in the mood actually. Yeah, carry on walking. So, uh, there weren't many, so it was easy for me to track down most of them that were in this country through the census. Now, I've had a quick look at the 1922. 21 census and I can't find them on there either at the moment. I know it's new but I always find find my past not as good as ancestry. Uh, I think I had this problem once before and then as soon as ancestry got their hands on it it was different. I found loads out. So that's where I started talking about ancestry then and I was talking about what I've just been doing and uh I'm just trying to really find out where Marianne Oak Brooks went, my gatekeeper to the past. My mother always said to me when I was young, because we all had lovely slim fingers, and she said, we come from finer things. My mum used to look, love looking around stately homes because my grandmother knew something about our family. And she probably passed it on to my mother, you see. My mother would have lived very close to her up until she died. My great-grandmother died in 1930, her husband 1929. I can't remember her talking so much about them. She talked about her parents and she talked about Uncle Louis. Or it could have been her grandfather Louis always walked with a stick and had a top hat on. But anyway, um, my mum used to say that to us. And um, of course I've gone back in time, haven't I? I've gone way back through Marianne Oakbrook's tree. Right back in Suffolk and Cambridgeshire. And I've picked up some very, very noble people. Very noble. Linking us to the De Clares, to the Stutvilles, and to lots and lots of very important people, which I'm not going into now because that's a completely different story. I call them the medieval ancestors. And like I always say to people, once you find somebody with a good link to someone of importance, they will be well recorded. We were well known for keeping good records. William the Conqueror did it when he started doing uh, the Doomsday Book, recording every cow, pig, chicken and human, every plough for tax reasons. We were very good at keeping records, believe me, land and tax. So there's an awful lot of material, a wealth, a plethora of stuff, folks. So don't give up. I come across people who might have just been agricultural labourers. You go back in time, you find out they've got gentry in their family. So this is very murky. I'm just walking through it, folks. Got my old boots on, it don't matter. Want to pick up a Prosecco on the way home. 
just a small bottle to go with me lamb cutlet I'm having today a lamb cutlet with a jacket potato or I might have I, we had um, stew yesterday lovely beef, beef casserole with dumplings I cooked lovely and a nice chocolate pudding to follow <sighs> yeah so so folks family tree is a good thing and I got a feeling with the Covid a lot of people started doing their tree it's very uh, addictive it's a, one of those hobbies that you keep wanting to find out who their parents were and who their parents are but what a lot of people are doing as well I remind people I have to remind myself don't assume always check and verify do not just accept or copy what someone else has put down check it out don't just copy is that you could be going down a wrong tree that person could have made a mistake and you're just carrying on the mistake it's, a, it's something you've got to learn very early with tree work it's so easy especially with some common names like wood and smith I mean, those are two branches I'm still quite stuck on. I haven't got, I've gone back quite a way, but not for nowhere near like I have in some other branches. No. It's, it's with Smiths and Woods in London, it's particularly difficult. <clears throat> Even once you get out in the countryside, it's still not always easy. So there you are. I'm walking you through the wood and I'm giving you a lesson on family tree I like that's why I like to keep my videos actually because I do sort of explore my thoughts and feelings a lot and it's not always miserable stuff you know and I as to finish as I've said loads of times how I wish I could have heard my ancestors voices heard their visual diaries god that would not be a bloody great thing you know i mean i've got ancestors who did write they wrote notes and stuff sermons i have got them and a lot of people kept diaries but as we know stuff gets thrown out burnt destroyed lost Yeah, I'm still very passionate about it. And I'll tell you what keeps me sane. But I have to make myself go for a walk. Walking inspires me as well. It re-energizes re my brain as well as my body. Although I didn't want to stop today on tree, I knew I needed to look after my lungs. So important. Especially, well, I haven't had a cigarette for 13 years. But the thing is, no, nine years, but I gave up about 15 odd years ago. Um, but it took me to 2013, actually, to stop completely. Yeah, it took me to 2013. Right, what I'm going to do now, there's a little path. I wonder if I can go up that one. I wonder if that... See people going up there. Yeah, let's go up here. Because oh, I want to go back up. This would take me up to the um, the tower. Because there's a there's a path. Just seen someone walking along there, so I'll go this way. Not a path I hardly ever use. So I'm not good doing the far side of the wood. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to carry on now up towards the the water towers. So folks, that's a little bit of me. This will be using up most of the memory. So this is Sheila, 9th of January, 2022. I've got to get used to saying that. On a winter's day in Western Whirlbury Woods. Over and out.